MSI is going all in on its Z690 series, releasing uh, its rare Force motherboard, which barely made its debut last year on Z590 uh, lineup of motherboards. Today, we are reviewing the MPG Z690 Force from MSI, a motherboard going for excellence in versatility, showing off about the most outrageous specs 400 bucks will buy you. And fun fact, for you subscribing to my channel will not only bring you eternal use but also infinite wisdom yes it will so the mpg is MSI's more enthusiast uh, family of motherboard. And the Force is basically uh, a white version of its more known carbon sibling. And despite being $10 cheaper, it mirrors its PCB layout, VRM, specs, and cooling solutions. In short, as far as this review goes, whatever applies to the Force also applies to the carbon. Now, more specifically, the Force comes with a heavy spec sheet and aims to please not only the heaviest gamers out there, but also pro content creators offering a dual PCIe 5.0 GPU support as well as an all PCIe 4.0 extended storage solution. And the entire thing below 400 bucks. So yeah, promises were made. And to be absolutely frank with you, um, not all of them were kept. Now, starting with the obvious, we are dealing with an 8-layered ATX motherboard, exactly what you need to insulate PCIe signal and therefore safely operate PCIe 5.0 level bandwidth. But it will also help in better propagating away VRM extra heat. So in terms of PCB fundamentals, the force uh, check the boxes. Now, a little note on the overall aesthetics of the board. It's pleasing to the eye and looks great. My only concern is the presence of a rather cheap plastic eye roofing and the absolutely useless RGB LEDs, which I will address later on this review. Now, CPU socket wise, our force board is powered by the brand new LGA 1700 CPU socket supporting both 12th and 13th generation of Intel Core processors. That's 500 more pins than on its LGA 1200 predecessor, mainly motivated by both a more power-hungry Alder Lake processor and upgraded bandwidth through the introduction of DDR5 RAM and the brand new PCIe 5.0 standard. Talking of which, Alder Lake processors introduce the brand new PCIe 5.0 standard, which means that this board is juggling with no less than three different PCIe standards. PCIe 3.0, which delivers one gigabyte per second per PCIe lanes, PCIe 4.0, which doubles that, and now PCIe 5.0, which redoubles that to four gigabyte per second per PCIe lane. But do not get fooled, I wanna say, because even though PCIe 5.0 standard is a gargantuous monster of bandwidth, it's not going to translate in immediate performance gain, at least for now. Up to today, we still have zero PCIe 5.0 enabled components, uh, especially in the graphic cards departments, which is uh, still struggling to go beyond the PCIe 3.0 bandwidth standard. So it's great for future proofing, I'll grant you that, but it's mainly a marketing stunt at least for now. Now, power delivery wise, the MPG Z690 Force comes with 2075 amps power stages organized in an 18 plus two direct phases. This is 1500 amps in total, 1350 of which are CPU centric. It does sound like a lot, but it is what you need uh, to fully realize the overclocking potential of the latest Adder Lake processors, especially the i7 and the i9 variant. In short, this motherboard is an overclocker. With a 12 core, 20 thread i7 12700K, I managed a stable overclock at 5.2 gigahertz which is absolutely impressive. The real issue here is the incredible amount of power needed to stay there. We are talking about 300 watts of power, which no matter the cooling solution means a very hot CPU with temps going beyond 100 degrees Celsius. Either way, do not expect to run your processor beyond 5.1 gigahertz to realistically keep your CPU temps below thermal throttling limits. Now, VRM cooling wise, well, 1500 amps is a lot of power and heat 
Thankfully, MSI equipped the force with a premium heat pipe connected two blocks VRM cooler. Both blocks come with extended radiating surfaces, a large all metal IO roofing on the main block and several thick and protuberant winglets on the side VRM block. In addition, both of our VRM benefits from the double contact design, which provide both chokes and power stages with thermopadded direct contact to the blocks, again improving heat transition from components to radiating elements. And in terms of thermals, this translates in a very cool VRM indeed, with an overclock i7 and the long-lasting synthetic stress test temperatures stayed comfortably below 60 degrees Celsius, which is rather impressive and show that this section of the board benefited from the full focus of MSI engineering. But I do believe that MSI could have done even better if it was not for the presence of this old plastic cover which not only serves no cooling purposes but does have the bad habit of encapsulating a large portion of our VRM main block and probably does reflect back some of its radiating heat, creating somewhat of an oven effect. Nevertheless, I'm still giving an A- uh, grade to this VRM being one of the most powerful and heat efficient uh, of its class, at least uh, below $400. And obviously, especially made for i7 and i9 class processors. So big overclocking kudos to MSI for this. Now, RAM-wise, obviously one of the big stars of this year release, the MPG Z690 Force can support up to 128GB of DDR5 RAM, organized in a dual-channel configuration and clockable to a blazing 6.6GHz. In any cases, DDR5 memory will deeply affect your day-to-day -day computing, both in gaming and production, since it provides twice the bandwidth of the DDR4 memory and far surpasses its clocking abilities. What I would submit is a much much greater uh, upgrade incentive than uh, the new PCIe 5.0 standard, which is, yeah, like I said, useless for now. Now, last note on this, DDR5 boards are not backward compatible to DDR4 memory since the memory sockets are different. So don't try installing your DDR4 memory on this board to the risk of damaging both your board and RAM. Now, storage-wise, again, a sizable upgrade compared to Z590 powered boards. We got five M.2 solid state drive connectors, all of which can operate at PCIe 4.0 standard, which is quite a jump from only one PCIe 4.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive on its predecessor, obviously making PCIe 4.0 powered storage mainstream on Intel boards and providing no less than 64 gigabit per second worth of data swap on every single M.2 solid state drive individually. A lot of bandwidth indeed, and way too complicated wording for my French mouth. As usual, M.2 solid state drives do get really hot really quickly, especially at PCIe 4.0 standard. But thankfully, MSI did not skim on its cooling remedies. We have these three large, thick and thermopadded heat sinks, which do an amazing job at radiating excess heat away. The CPU-linked M.2 solid state drive is the only one equipped with back thermal pads, which might not be just here for premium appeal. The fact that this M.2 solid state drive is the only only one having access to the CPU PCIe 5.0 lanes and the extra cooling care could hint at the support of PCIe 5.0 M.2 solid state drive and could double data swap up to an insane 128 gigabit per second. Finally, I am happy to see that MSI has decided to equip all of its M.2 solid state drive with its very own version of a screwless locking mechanism which only made its coming out a short year ago on Asus motherboards. Truth be told, I'm a little confused on how many there are. Some of the locking mechanisms are identical to Asus, which is a good thing. Some others look very cheap and fragile. A good, great initiative coming from MSI here, but like many things on this board, I do feel that it's been rushed out a little bit too quickly and lacks some uh, engineering appeal, if I want to say it this way. And I do. But nevertheless, it remained that uh, storage is a first class citizen on this motherboard and something which will especially appeal to uh, content creators, which will be able to uh, uh, sort them in RAID configuration, which again is very important for them. So a big deserved uh, storage kudos to MSI for this. Now, less noticeable, we got our usual six SATA three plugs all of which can dispense a slow bottlenecking yet reliable 6 gigabit per second worth of data. 
nothing new here. Now, PCIe expansion wise, we got no less than three 16 slots PCIe exports. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU has 16 PCIe lanes. Therefore, this is where you'd want your GPU placed for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. In a dual GPU configuration, the 16 lanes are split in an 8x8 configuration. That's a massive amount of bandwidth. But as I said in the beginning of this review, most of our uh, graphic cards today do not go beyond PCIe 3 standard in terms of bandwidth, so yeah, uh, it, it's not the most useful feature of this motherboard, but I'll say this, in a dual GPU configuration, uh, you can be sure that your graphics card will run full potential at their full, full, full performance potential and thus for many years to come. Now, let's note the absence of any PCIe slot opening mechanism as seen on Asus ROG series, something I would have wanted to see replicated by other manufacturers. Now, chipset-wise, because that's why we're mostly here, we got Intel's first PCIe 4.0 native supported chipset chipset. It has more bandwidth, more lanes, more USBs than its predecessor, but most noticeably, the Z690 chipset manages to deliver PCIe 4.0 standard bandwidth on a very cold 6 watts heat footprint, half of what AMD managed to do, and the infamous reason why AMD had to equip most of its X570 motherboard with expensive, sometimes noisy chipset fans, or more recently with very large, imposing and still expensive heat shields. In comparison, the Z690 heat shield is much smaller in area, costs less and does a great job at keeping the chipset below 45 degrees Celsius at all time, which is where you want it to be for a long-lasting board. In short, and as I said before on other motherboard reviews, uh, Intel makes PCIe 4.0 more mainstream on its platforms and most importantly cheaper uh, to implement so something we will see i am certain on all of its la latest generation b series motherboards now back io wise first let me note the presence of a padded integrated backplate always a plus but fully uh, expected at this price range and starting from the left we got a flash bias button great for cpu less bias updates which <coughs> <laughs> you will need on this motherboard. You'll see what I mean later. Next, we have four second generation USB plugs, which is a bit much. Our upgraded display port and HDMI output for integrated graphics. Six 3.2 second generation USB plugs able to transfer data up to 10 gigabit per second, except this type C right here which runs on a dual channel and can therefore spew up to 20 gigabit per second, earning its unofficial naming of USB 4.0, a 2.5 gigabit LAN, which is now the new standard, and our brand new Wi-Fi 6E dual band adapter able to broadcast on the new 6 gigahertz radio spectrum. And finally, and thankfully, we have our latest A-channel ALC 4080 audio codec from Realtek, which is now the new premium audio standard, giving an all digitalized and more intelligent audio experience. The good thing about it is that it is both in recording and playback more or less static free, since both left and right audio channels have been traced on dedicated PCB layers, hence increasing insulation signal. This is a great audio solution for uh, streamers out there. We'll need both good quality playback and recording abilities. Overall, uh, a very well equipped and specced back IO. I I'll note uh, an, a more dominant presence of the 3.2 second generation plugs, which is a great thing. So I really don't have much critic to, to say here other than great uh, uh, back IO kudos to MSI for this. Now, front panel connector wise, well, here we got nothing new. We got our usual two USB second generation front panel connector for monitoring, a five gigabit USB third generation front panel connector, and our 10 gigabit type C, all of which were fully expected at this price range. Cooling wise, we got a rather generous eight PWM fan connectors, including a single water pump connector, which, is, I mean, it's it's more than enough to operate a very solid air flow in your build, which, which is what's necessary for this kind of, of motherboard. But I do regret not having a second dedicated water pump connector for more enthusiast friendly builds and, and something that this kind of motherboard 
would uh, I think push towards. So something maybe to improve on the next iteration of this motherboard. Troubleshooting wise, we have our usual easy debugger here to signal the main stages of our boot, the absolute bare minimum on a motherboard juggling no less than three different PCIe standards. But most importantly, and thankfully MSI had the presence of spirit to add a Q error code help you refine your troubleshooting experience and which can also be used as a temperature monitoring screen for your processor's heat issues, something that I absolutely love. Now, BIOS wise, and here I'll be short and direct, it is absolutely unusable. It is a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. It's so absolutely buggy. Every time you try to move the cursor somewhere, there's some weird artifacts appearing. And every time you, you click on an option, it's, it turns into Chinese and, and overlaps graphics over graphics. And Lord behold, if you do find by pure chance the option you were looking for when you click on it it absolutely freezes to death what do you want me to say msi this is a great motherboard but you cannot comfortably um overclock your processor you cannot access the clocking uh, specification of your ram you can do nothing so you have a great board without a soul that's what i want to say and before you say anything of course i tried to update the bias but it was the very same bias version on the force website than, than what was delivered in the box. And there's nothing since. So yeah, chances are that some of you, if not all of you, will get a motherboard who's, who's gonna be usable to, to, to stock clock and stock this and stock that, or you're gonna be uh, looking for software, it's Windows-based software to, to play around your processor, which is really not... Um, comfortable to say the least. So yes, MSI, this is not acceptable. Not coming from one of the big four companies on this planet and I'm not gonna let you go easy on this. I'm really gonna you know, make a fuss. I I'm, I'm reviewing a few other MSI motherboards and, and I really hope this is a, a one-off. I, I do hope you're gonna fix this as soon as possible, I guess. Now, finally, this would not be an MSI motherboard with at least a glimpse of some RGB LEDs and I want to say it's almost comical because behind this gray mass of nothingness we get a rather bright RGB strip hidden under our chipset heat shield. Only problem? No matter the angle, no matter the color, you will simply never see it and frankly I'd rather not have any RGB at all than what they did here. Another sign of a rushed product if you ask me. Thankfully our four RGB connectors are here, three of which are addressable. In short, the whole mark of a, a, a very hurried release, if you ask me, uh, especially when a gaming motherboard forgets to make its RGB LEDs visible. Really? In conclusion, at 390 bucks before taxes, the MPG Z694 is 10 bucks cheaper than its otherwise identical carbon sibling, but more impressively, $70 more expensive than its previous Z590 iteration. Now, that is a lot of cash. To account for and and when you look at the spec difference yeah you, you might be able to motivate 70 dollars maybe but my beef is somewhere else despite being a motherboard with great fundamentals and great selling arguments i mean vrm multiple pci 5.0 gpu support to name just a couple i can't shake the feeling that msi rushed this motherboard and made some real mistakes. First and crucially, as of the day of today, the BIOS is unusable, buggy, full of artifacts, and I dare you to do anything involving more than three clicks before it freezes. So yes, uh, something which will always remain on the way of this motherboard to be uh, a worthy comp tender to anything in the competition. I also find the M.2 solid state drive locking mechanism equally rushed and a good example of what MSI should not do. Try to cram in features at all costs in a hurry. Finally, we do have this RGB strip embedded inside the board but invisible to all. Yet again, another sign of a rushed product, I'm afraid. Now, M.2 solid state drive locking mechanism or some hidden RGB strip, these are non-essentials and can be easily forgotten. Uh, forgiven, but having a non-operating BIOS, that is more problematic. So despite being a very well-spec motherboard with a very current pricing, actually it's the best spec motherboard at this price range, unless MSI does something about the BIOS, which they can, 
means I can just put a new update. I cannot uh, advise you to buy this motherboard because you'll find yourself with a product which can only deliver half of its potential and you're just gonna pull your hair as I did to try to tweak it around. And that is a shame because if it was not for the BIOS issue at $380, this would have been your biggest bang for your buck. And that is the truth.